On this episode of China Uncensored, China prepares for war. You know, there's so much beauty in the universe. The Earth is just a tiny blue dot floating around the edge of a galaxy that's just one of at least 100 billion other galaxies. So you think, you'd think that when it comes to a string of uninhabited rock in the middle of the ocean, everyone could just chill out. But no, China insists, insists that they own the Diaoyu Islands, and Japan is just adamant that the Senkaku Islands belong to them. And now, China has issued a directive to the People's Liberation Army, the PLA, to start training for war. Hooray. So now, China's three million man army is training for war. That's just great. That's just... The directive is a shift in tone from previous ones that only focused on coordination within different branches of the PLA. This one uses the phrase Da Jiang, which means fighting wars. And while it doesn't specifically mention Japan, this does. This is a commentary in the People's Liberation Army Daily that conjures up image of the Japanese invasion of World War II and implies that Japan is gathering up other East Asian countries to quote, contain China. Now, some Chinese military officials are calling for a quick strike to assert China's claim on the islands. They call it, kill a chicken to scare the monkeys. I actually call that inciting a war. According to a treaty with the U.S. post-World War II, Japan has administrative authority over the islands, something the U.S. has recently reaffirmed. And for the past several decades, that was fine and dandy, until Chinese leaders decided to assert their claims to the islands, which, by the way, would give them sovereignty over huge untapped oil reserves nearby. I mean, after all, if China had a huge oil reserve right next door, they wouldn't have to keep sending their people into conflict-torn regions like the Sudan to get kidnapped all the time. Now, if you think there's no way World War III could be sparked by something as stupid as this, just think about all the stupid reasons so many other wars have gotten started. For example, in the beginning of the 20th century, the old Austro-Hungarian Empire and Serbia were battling over disputed sovereignty rights in the Balkans. Then in 1914, this guy, Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated by this guy, who was backed by Serbian military officers. So those two got fighting, and a month later, every major European power had taken sides, and World War I began. By the time the war ended in 1918, eight and a half million people died. Fortunately, a lot of people think China is just doing some saber-rattling, and really, they have more to lose than gain. If they were to attack Japan, all the ASEAN countries that China has been having territorial disputes with would probably unite and China would be surrounded by hostile countries. Not to mention what the US and EU would probably do. Of course, China always has North Korea, and those guys are ready for action. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.